Hey all, welcome to Lead Technologies. In this session, today we'll give an overview of what is Oracle ERP Cloud. So let's get into, let's get started. So Oracle ERP Cloud is one of the SaaS product from Oracle. So developers who are not aware of cloud technologies or you know like cloud platforms. So in general, in any of like a, from different market vendors, if you observe, there are generally like around three offerings. Of course, here I mentioned the fourth one also, data as service, but generally there are three offerings from most of the vendors. Like if you consider Microsoft, if you consider Google and even IBM, and there are a lot number of vendors who have different solutions in different cloud offerings. From Oracle point of view, if you consider here, the first offering is SaaS. It's called software as a service. From the Oracle, the SaaS offering, the product which it is offering with a with a, like a SaaS as a model is Oracle Fusion Apps. So within the SaaS model, there are other ERPs from the Oracle also like our NetSuite and EPM Cloud, Hyperion Cloud. There are a lot number of cloud SaaS models are there from the Oracle. So developers who are not aware what exactly SaaS is all about is nothing but you know it's like a software service available over the internet. It doesn't need to install anything. It just you'll have an URL and just that is how you just access the software. So simple example is let us say if you if you like to sign up an account for Gmail, so we doesn't need to install any hardware. I mean to say we doesn't need any additional hardware. We doesn't need any software application to be installed in our system, right? We just require an URL. You just require credentials to log in and just you can perform your functionalities. So that is a SaaS based model. So predominantly like there are a lot number of vendors which which are already there in the SaaS model. Like some examples are ServiceNow or you know Salesforce and even uh, Business Factors, Ariba ERP. So the lot number of vendors who are there in the market which offers different, they have different, you know, like a functionalities which they are offering. Coming to the PaaS model, platform as a service. So now let us say if you are from Java background, if you want to develop some Java enterprise application, you require an application server. So until unless you have an enterprise application server, I mean, just until unless you have an application server, you cannot run your application. So you require to install an application server on the machine, on your machine, and then you run it. But coming to the PaaS model, what you do is your particular application server will be available on the cloud, and that particular instance will have the, its its own URL and it will have its set of like credentials to which you deploy to the which you, I mean you your custom application deploy into that particular provided platform, and then you just run it. So that's how you access the that's how you access application so the basically you know like uh, any of the cloud model generally it require generally you know it's like just a subscription based model it doesn't need any installation on your local machine okay of course there are some scenarios where you need to install a particular set of plugins or you know like a, uh, a client installation required in some set of scenarios okay infrastructure is service is nothing but you know like just you're like uh, subscribing to a hardware on the cloud let us say you like uh, you are a startup you know like uh, you don't you don't you know, like uh, you just want trial a particular functionality okay for a given month so for just one month it doesn't you don't need to buy a bigger hardware and test your product right what you do is you just subscribe the hardware from oracle amazon google and something like that and even microsoft and from them you just use the use their hardware service for a particular month and just use sign get get out of that right so this is these are different offerings from different vendors from oracle perspective like uh, these are the offerings which are there coming to data as a service nothing but like you know maybe if you are aware there is something called you know like a uh, yellow books yellow book or something something called you know like like maybe let us say just dial.com right so what they do they just provide a data for your search engine so like, of course it's a local search, search engine here data as a service nothing but oracle provides a valid data for a particular set of customers let us say if you want to find out like uh, uh, vendors of a particular product in a particular area oracle provides them on a paid based model okay we'll not get deeper into this but now our concentration on the SaaS based model in that we have an a we have a software which oracle is providing a SaaS based model that is the oracle fusion apps it is also called as oracle cloud erp but generally the developers or you know in the community they call it as fusion apps okay so when it started, you know, like uh, it started in 2005 where Oracle thought of reinventing a new application, nothing but a new ERP based on the learnings which it had bought from different 
uh, what you say like uh, from the market and after buying set of ERPs like in 2005 what Oracle has done is it has bought around larger set of ERPs like uh, people people soft Siebel JD Edwards and before that Oracle Libis was a predominant uh, major application from Oracle. So what Oracle has done is like uh, every particular application has good set of functionalities. If you consider Ebiz, Ebiz was famous for financials. PeopleSort was famous for you know HRMS. Siebel was famous for CRM. JD Edwards was famous for manufacturing. So each particular enterprise application which Oracle had had a different set. You know like each particular ERP was having its major functionality so what oracle thought of doing was you know like rather than having each particular application was famous for one one set of module why, why don't they reinvent a, a new application having good having getting the uh, getting the good functionalities from all the other things and building something with a new technology you know here 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 in the fusion apps it is not just a functionality but it totally implemented a new technology Okay, like uh, using a SOVA services, using ADF pages, BPM, the lot number of technologies which were used in the Fusion apps. So, like uh, developers who maybe generally they have confusion between what is Fusion technology, what is Fusion apps, what is Fusion middleware, all these things, right? So, Fusion apps is an ERP. Fusion technology is nothing but Fusion middleware, nothing but the middleware product which is used for pro which is used for building Fusion applications. Fusion middleware is independent. I mean to say, like let us say if you want to build some particular web application, yes, you can go with the Fusion middleware. Okay, it's an independent middleware platform which Oracle provided for building the non-Oracle products also. Okay. This is a fusion architecture. If you observe, generally any of the any of the web application, whenever any developer comes, designs, generally they will have a three layers, right? Front end, middleware, and a back end kind of thing. So here, if you observe in a ERP, generally you'll have a modules, right? We generally call it as applications or modules also. Okay. So these are the set of technologies which are used in the fusion applications. So one is SOVA for the purpose of business services. It can be SOAP services or REST services and application integration services and business process monitoring like a workflow purposes or human workflow notification purposes, right? JDeloper is one of the platform which they use for the purpose of designing the front end web pages. ADF is the one which it uses. BI Publisher is one of the famous reporting technology which fusion like a fusion apps uses and uh, Content management, there are a lot number of other technologies which are used in this one. Predominantly, the famous one are like uh, for business services, it uses SOVA, for front end, it uses ADF, and for the reporting, it uses OBIE. Okay, and like uh, let us say if your developer is from a uh, eBay's background, how it is correlated with the fusion apps? Like nothing but like uh, if you want to correlate, let us say if you know, like if you are, let us say if you are trying to learn a new programming language. It is very big. It becomes very easy to understand something based on your own understanding. Nothing but let us say, I know C language. If I want to learn Java language, if I can correlate Java language with C language, it it you know I can learn it very easily. The same way. So now, if you want to compare developers who are from the EBS background, if they want to compare Fusion apps, what exactly is the difference all about? So the basic difference is. The front end part in the ebiz is based on either oaf pages or oracle forms but coming to fusion apps it is totally based on adf pages so in ebusiness suit we have a workflow for the purpose of notification but here we have bpm for the purpose of notification so in the ebiz we have something called web adi here we have something called adf di so in ebiz we have something called fdf AD, fnd attachments very very you know like uh, like invoice attachment payable attachment receipts receipts attachment everything but here it is based on ucm universal content management okay this is how a general correlation i could not give you total overall the picture because it requires good amount of time but right now very in a higher level of uh, correlation this is the correlation between fusion apps and the ebiz so we just discussed this already yeah, these are some of the yeah, sorry. There are some set of important links to learn or to explore on the fusion apps like these are the few Links I provided here. Let me log into fusion apps Okay, because I just want to see how it looks like, you know, like in the further coming session We'll try to concentrate on a particular area But right now in this particular first session on the fusion apps what we do is it'll just try to log into Oracle application cloud cloud so here if you see it it is it mentioned as oracle application cloud it is not mentioning it as oracle fusion application right so of course you know like oracle oracle always come up with the new names based on the product running and you know like they just give a new name like that okay oh, sorry we just got error let us try to re-log in now okay 
let's wait for some time because this is a demo instance right so there is a chance it will be generally slow compared to production instance so here you can see that url is oracledemos.com right so oam oracle access management right so let's see how it looks like yeah so finally we could see our oracle erp cloud login instance the instance after logging in so this is how oracle oracle erp cloud looks like right so here if you see this particular stuff here the icons right and this employee who logged in here and here you can just click on this particular menu it shows the list of all the menus which this user is having access, right? So like uh, generally like uh, it is not really a user responsibility menu kind of functionality here. It is based on more more of a, you know, like a data roles concept. Okay, we'll not get deep into all those things right now. We'll not get into the concepts right now. We just understand how it looks like. Okay, so the page which you are seeing in the browser, it's totally based on ADF. Okay. So in the SaaS based model, you know, like uh, generally you will not have, it. you'll have a very tighter access nothing but let us say oracle doesn't give any direct direct database access but how can you see the data right let us say if you want to design your custom query or you know if you want to check out uh, validate something and if you want to design some new component so there are different way different approaches you have to follow for designing any new components in this one because the customization or extension whatever you you would like to go with for fusion apps a little bit different approach approach you have to go with let us say if you want to go with a new report you can just go with you know like a bi publisher report but how do you know the tables right so that's yeah that's where the very bigger problem comes into picture so for that you have this repository where you can try to find out the information like a uh, set of tables which are involved in a particular module right if you observe like uh, this one provides you some set of basic functionality uh, basic information regarding for a given module what are the components nothing but like uh, generally in any erp you have a rise components here also we have similar concept here so we have reports we have web services we have tables right the similar way yeah it's still taking time it could be because of oracle erp instance slowness or maybe because of my network flow my networks slow because this is a de demo instance right so generally you know it will be not fast okay but we have to leave with it there is no other way and here if you see generally like once you get a trial instance you'll have all these options right so now this is a primary login and if you want to check it out the business intelligence nothing but the bi publisher report right let us say let's see whether this gets open and the other one is workflow right bpm which is based on bpm here right so this is how the bi publisher stuff looks like right so you can just create a new new report once you have the data model stuff so in the next couple of sessions like in the next sessions like what we do is we'll try to concentrate on a basic set of functionality in the erp cloud so for now we'll just sign off thanks for your time good day